My weird school. Fast facts. Sports. Written by Dan Gutman. Pictures by Jim Pellot. Chapter nine. Other sports. Skating. The first skate blades were made from the bones of horses, cows, and deer. That must have been weird to strap cow bones to your feet, but it would be a lot weirder if cows were strapping human bones to their feet and skating around on them. The jump called the axle didn't get its name because the skater spins around an axle. It was named after Axel Poulsen, a speed skater and figure skater from Norway. He was the first to land the jump in 1882. Similarly, Swedish skater Ulrik Salcho invented the jump that came to be named after him, the Salcho. And the Lutz is named after Alois Lutz from Austria. Some day, maybe I'll invent a new jump, and it will be called the Andrea. Skaters will sometimes spin more than three hundred revolutions per minute, and their arms may be subjected to more than four G's. Wow, I'm surprised that skaters' eyeballs don't fall out of their sockets. Skiing. Some day you may ski on the moon. When American astronaut Harrison Schmidt walked on the moon in 1972, he said that the mountains in the Sea of Serenity would make a great location for lunar skiing holidays. There is a ski resort in Dubai where the average temperature is over 90 degrees. What? How is that possible? Well, the ski resort is indoors. Ski Dubai has five slopes of man-made snow, a toboggan run, a body slide, and an ice cave. It also has penguins, and after you finish skiing, you can go hang out with them. I wish I could go run away to Dubai and live with the penguins. Rugby. Do you know why the sport of rugby is called rugby? I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. The game isn't played on a rug, and it has nothing to do with bees. Rugby is called rugby because it was started in 1823 at a British school called Rugby School. I know that was your next guess. According to legend, the game began when a student named William Webb Ellis was playing soccer, and he suddenly picked the ball up in his hands and started running with it. Bowling. The biggest bowling alley in the world is Inazawa Grand Bowl in Inazawa City, Japan. It has one hundred sixteen lanes. Wow, that's a lot of lanes! If you took one hundred sixteen bowling lanes and you lined them up right next to each other, it would look pretty much like a bowling alley, because that's what bowling alleys are—lanes lined up next to each other. At the Inazawa Grand Bowl, six hundred ninety-six people can bowl at the same time. I feel sorry for the guy who runs the shoe rental desk at that place. Tennis. Tennis is the most disgusting sport in the history of the world. You know why? Because for the first hundred years that the game was played, the strings of the rackets were made from cow and sheep guts. It's true. Then I guess they realized that was gross, and they stopped doing it. Tennis balls used to be gross too. Back in the old days, they were stuffed with human hair. Yuck! 
There are lots of things people do with tennis balls besides play tennis. This is for real. You can put them on the bottom of chair legs so they don't scrape the floor. You can cover them with Vaseline and hang them outside your house to keep bugs away. You can hang one inside your garage to help your parents park the car. When the tennis ball touches the windshield, it's time to stop. You can drill a hole in one to make a home for pet mice. You can put one on the end of a broom to rub scuff marks off floors. You can toss a few into the dryer to help your clothes dry faster. You can cut one in half and use it to make it easier to open jars. You can stop snorting if you attach one to the back of your pajamas so you can't sleep on your back. Most snorters only snore while sleeping on their backs. Evan Gulagong was a tennis player from Australia who came from an Aboriginal family. Aborigines are the native people of Australia, and they have faced a lot of discrimination there. But Gulagong became a tennis star and won 14 Grand Slam titles. That was pretty amazing. But what is even more amazing is that in the Aboriginal language, the last name Gulagong means kangaroo's nose. Table Tennis Thomas Edison invented the light bulb. The Wright brothers invented the first successful airplane. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. And in 1880, a British engineer named James Gibb invented the ping pong ball. Hey, somebody had to. Gibb actually gets credit for inventing the game of table tennis itself. He wanted to create a game he could play indoors when it was raining. In those early days, table tennis was called Flim Flam, Gossima, and Wiff Waff. But in 1901, an equipment manufacturer renamed it Ping Pong, and that's when the sport became a big success. Table tennis was banned in the Soviet Union from 1930 to 1950. The powers that be thought it was bad for your eyes. Volleyball Volleyball and basketball were invented just nine miles from each other in Massachusetts and within four years of each other. As you know, basketball was invented in Springfield by James Naismith in 1891. Volleyball was invented right up the road in Holyoke by William George Morgan in 1895. In fact, Naismith and Morgan were both gym teachers and... They even knew each other. Morgan saw that basketball involved a lot of running and it was difficult for some people to play. He wanted to create a game that anybody in his classes could play. So he combined some parts of tennis, badminton, and handball. The result? Volleyball. Of course, there are a lot of great athletes who play volleyball and a lot of terrible athletes who play basketball, like Harlow and his friends. At first, Morgan used basketballs, but he realized that basketballs were too heavy for volleyball. Next, he tried just using the rubber bladder that was inside a basketball, but that was too light. So he asked the Spalding Company, started by baseball star Albert Spalding, to design a ball specifically for volleyball, and they made one that was just right. It was sort of like the story of the three bears when you think about it.